is there a stem cell among these seven cells? And if so, which one? Go ahead. Name out a number if you think five. it's five. You're good. Most people say seven because it's the square one, because it's different from the others. You're absolutely right. And the reason it is is because it's not linear. At that point, and that point only, it, it stems. It makes a stem. That's why they call them stem cells. They stem into different types of cells. And that's critical because if you're going to heal the body, you do it by sending out these cells from your bone marrow, and they actually travel, as I showed you, they can move, they travel to a, the part of the body that's injured, and they replace whatever cell is damaged. If it's the brain, they make a brain cell. If it's the liver, they make a liver cell. If it's the heart, they make a heart cell. This is called pluripotency. Stem cells are the only cells that can make different cells from themselves, okay? So where do we see it? Where do we see stem cells in nature? Bone marrow. And what's happening is that we've known this forever. We've known this since the beginning of hematology, decades and decades and decades ago. There are cells that make our blood, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, all that. And they don't start off as white blood cells and red blood cells. Another red blood cell doesn't make a red blood cell. A stem cell makes it. That's the point. And we've known this forever. Now, the other place in nature where we see cells that make cells different from themselves is in the embryo. And every one of these little microscopic cells, embryonic stem cells, can make a whole baby. And they just keep stemming stemming and stemming and stemming and stemming and by the time you're born now everything below the uh, above the the white line are prenatal and everything below is postnatal and what we call postnatal cells cells that are already in your body when you're born we call them adults which leads to the confusing situation that a baby has adult cells and everybody gets confused about that. Um, there are trillions of cells, of course, but there's only 220 different types of cells. And there, see those uh, little X's there? Those are cells that can still stem. They don't make cells just like themselves. They make different types of cells. All the ones without the X don't. And those are our adult stem cells. And the thing that we've known forever is that they make blood. So there are two places where we see stem cells in nature. One is hematopoiesis, or making blood cells in bone marrow, and the other is the embryo. And that's all we knew right up to 2000. People don't get this. This is a new discovery. This is not the same old, same old. What took so long for us to discover these cells? Well, it, it, it was discovered because we treated leukemia, which is a, a blood cancer, by wiping out the bone marrow so that the bone marrow would no longer make leukemic cells. The problem is this made uh, these little folks awfully sick. And if we didn't put somebody else's bone marrow into them, they would die. And this is what uncovered the function of bone marrow. When we were able to remove the bone marrow, put a new one in, and see what happened. And we could trace those cells because they were different. Before they were different, we didn't know that they were coming from the bone marrow. In fact, we thought a lot of adult stem cells that we know about now that cure diseases we thought they were just the ones making uh, blood before 2000. All right, so let's use uh, Algernon here and, and figure out how we learned it. Uh, this was uh, published by Orlick in Nature in 2001. We basically are going to do the same treatment that we do with leukemia. We're going to take some female rats and irradiate them or give them chemotherapy and wipe out their bone marrow. 
So now we have a female or XX chromosome set of cells that has no bone marrow. So we're going to take another volunteer rat, a boy rat, take out that bone marrow. Now we have XY chromosome cells that we then put into a poor female rat. And what do we end up with? We end up with, now follow this. Don't, don't let the, 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 little, the little bit of science here put you off. All we have here is a female rat that's had her bone marrow taken out and now has a male bone marrow. And we can stain, when we look under a microscope at cells, for the Y chromosome. All right? That's the setup. So we take the, we take the poor rat and surgically see the little surgeon there with his hands. And he's, he's going to tie off the carotid artery that feeds the brain. And lo and behold, right there in the brain that's usually served by that artery, there's going to be an infarct. That white part there is an infarct. It's dead brain because it didn't get enough blood. Then, we let, then they let the rats recover. They get better. They, first, they can't move. They're all limpy and what, and then all of a sudden they start to get better. When they get better, that's when we look right here with the microscope. And lo and behold, what do we find? Y chromosome containing brain cells. We never put brain cells into this rat. They had to come from only one place and one place only, and that is the male bone marrow that was put into the rat. The only way you can find brain cells in that uh, healing infarct is if they came from the bone marrow, traveled through the blood, under the influences that we understand uh, pretty well now, and they transformed into brain cells to heal the rat. The adult stem cell healing organ system, only recognized in the peer-reviewed journals in the last 10 years. Now, they thought maybe we didn't uh, mistreat the rats enough, so they then went and uh, tied off an artery in the heart. And lo and behold, they give the, uh, they give the rat, the female rat, a myocardial infarct, a, a dead heart cell. Well, when we look in a microscope, after these rats had some time to recover from their heart attack, we find Y chromosome containing heart cells. We didn't put heart cells into the rat, and certainly not male heart cells. So the only way this could have happened is if the bone marrow sent out adult stem cells that became heart cells when they reached the injured place. The adult stem cell healing organ system. Now we had proof that this happens in people, not just rats. So the Mayo Clinic did a study, and what happened is this. They, they accumulated patients that had had leukemia that had been treated with male bone marrow donation, and they themselves were females. So they set up the same situation. Now, you can't be tying off their carotid arteries or their coronary arteries, but you can wait till they die from something else, and they did. And then they would find, let's say in their heart, this was the one, they found Y chromosome heart cells, Y chromosome brain cells, Y chromosome liver cells. Those kinds of cells were never put into those patients, just bone marrow, adult stem cells. And that's how the discovery came to be. And that's why we know what we know. Whenever I speak to a physician and want to try to get them to understand this science, and believe me, they don't, I would say I Oh, and I'm a diagnostician, so my specialty crosses all other specialties. Uh, I specialize in MRI, computed axial tomography, ultrasound. Anytime there's an image of the body for any disease, uh, uh, you know, I'm, that's my job. And uh, I talk to other doctors for a living. I usually don't, uh, you know, I do talk to patients, but I, I so often am talking to their doctors. And I have 
almost yet to meet a doctor that knows the information in my book. I'd say maybe 1% in the world know this information that I'm giving you right now. And when I want to convince them, what I tell them is, let's take a blood count. Everybody knows you get a white blood cell count if they think you have appendicitis or some sort of infection, diverticulitis or whatever. And if you have an infection, your white blood cell goes, the number goes up, right? Well, the same exact thing now we're finding happens with adult stem cells. If you were to get a stroke or a heart attack or, or hepatitis and, and you're, you're knocking off your cells from these diseases, your adult stem cell number in your blood goes up and you can measure it. That's the science that knocks them out because it's so similar to the science they've already accepted. So let's look at this. Uh, please don't let this uh, picture uh, confuse you. In any all, all we're looking at is cells under a microscope, and there's a connection between bone marrow, and see this, the center thing? That's a blood vessel. And then the body cells are around it. And this same theme is repeated in every tissue, because you've got to have blood going to to all body tissues, okay? So now let's injure. That's why I put a little fire there, the injury to those cells. What happens? They release cytokines. When cells are damaged, their, their sodium potassium pump and whatnot loses its integrity and the cell just breaks open. The, the cell membrane just breaks open. Everything that's in the cell falls out. Well, there are cytokines in the cells. And those cytokines start to accumulate. Now stick with me here. See the little dots appearing? I just got this computer and I thought this was pretty cool. I was able to do this. So the little dots are the cytokines accumulating in the tissues first. That's injured. And we can measure that. Okay? Now if we measure down here where there's no cell damage, there won't be cytokines there. All right? Now they keep coming. We get more tissue damage and the little, and the little cytokines go into the blood. And of course, we can measure that, too. In a little while, that's going to, that blood's going to circulate everywhere, and it's going to hit the bone marrow, and cytokines stimulate the bone marrow to produce adult stem cells and send them out into the blood just the way they do if that was an infection, and it would send out white blood cells, which would raise your white blood cell count. Well, this is the same, same science. Same cytokines, just different cells. And the cells are very similar to white blood cells, too. And then, of course, once it puts it out, they're going to travel into the blood to all the tissues, and they're going to accumulate in the blood, and we can measure it. Okay? Now, by the very same process that we saw with that little pipette and the white blood cells chasing it, well, they move from the blood compartment to the injury department, okay, by a process called chemotaxis. And now you see all our nice stem cells accumulating, not where there's no damage, but accumulating exactly precisely where there's tissue and cell damage. And then we can measure that too. And what happens is, under the process called transdifferentiation, those stem cells start to replace the body cells that were injured. And that's how the healing cell system works. If only this was accepted by the doctors that don't know about it. That's why I wrote the book. Let's take a stroke. It's rapid brain cell uh, uh, death because of a lack of uh, blood flow. And here's a picture of what a stroke looks like on a CAT scan on the left and a, an MRI on the right. See the little area that looks different from the rest of the brain? Well, those are dead cells. And uh, Dunak and his friends found that after a stroke, within one month, if you're CD30